Right, so let's have a look at some switches. Now I've, I've noticed that you know there's a lot of some people that don't quite understand what switches sort of do. This is only a basic looking. It's, you know, I'm not going to go into sort of how much dB and all this you lose, which is, is not really much. Um, but obviously, the more switches you have, the more um, problems you're potentially adding to your coax line. But anyway, this is just a basic um, demonstration, sort of looking into the switches and sort of looking to see how they work and what they do. Because you can you can have them that way round, or you can have them that way round. Like you can have two antennas, or you can have one antenna going into two radios. Um, so. Let's have a look at them to see what they look like. Got two different types here. There's more than two different types, but they all do the same thing. Um, I prefer this one, but we'll go into that as to why in a minute, and we'll take them apart and we'll see the insides and we'll see, um, you know, the difference between that one and that one, um, and see what you think. Maybe, uh, maybe you'll prefer one type to the other. But let's get into it and have a look, shall we? All right. So I just had to go and get a screwdriver because I forgot the bloody thing. Anyway. By the way, in case you hadn't really already noticed, when I look at radio um, gear or radio equipment, I'm not one of these people that only looks on the ham side or looks on the CB side. I look on both sides, yeah, because I am a ham and a CB, -er, and there's a lot of people, a lot of hams that hate people that also use CB. Whereas I look at both sides. Yeah, you can use these for ham radio and for, for CB radio. Um, it's just the way that you use them is um, you know, that, that determines sort of you know, your, your results. Um, but we've got this one. This is one type with a, a little switch like that. It's obviously made by uh, Zatagi. It's called a Mod V2. Um, and you've only got two. You've got, two, you can, you've got the, uh, the option to have either two antennas going into one radio, or you can have two radios coming out um, well, one antenna, sorry, going into two different radios. So if, for example, you had, um, we well, just wanted to use two radios to save you having to unplug the coax and putting it in the other radio, you could just plug both radios into one switch, have the antenna coming out the other side, and then when you wanted to, when you wanted to use one radio, you have it on that. When you wanted to use the other radio, have it on that one. And it obviously works the same for antennas. You know, you just switch between antennas. Now you can get these in. Um, you know all different types this one's got four this particular one's a four switched uh, a four yeah four switched four ported four whatever you want to call it you can have four either four antennas going into one radio or four radios going into one antenna and all you do is you flick that one and then you switch between that and you flick it over there and you go between that um, I'm currently using one of these identical to this um, with my setup my one antenna um, going off into various different radios um, you know you could, that's how I use it um, so that's how you can do that but we're going to be looking at we're going to because they will work in the same way um, we're going to look at we're going to take apart the smaller ones you can also get these in different arrangements um, I don't know the maximum amount they can go up to but you can have them in um, two um, Three, I don't know about, yeah, three, I think, four, probably five, six. I don't know how big they go, but um, I used to have a four one. It's basically the same as this, um, except that obviously turned a lot more, and it was one, two, three, four. Um, so, yeah, the, this is bigger and heavier. These are very light. There's not a lot in there, but these are quite heavy. You know, these are quite a bit of weight to this, but in my opinion, these are better quality. Um, and you want to use these. If I had a four-way switcher, I'd be using one of these because I haven't got one anymore. I sold it. If I still had a four-way switcher, one of these, um, I would definitely be using that instead of the um, the switching one, which I currently have in my setup because I just think it's much better. I'd rather have one of these. But anyway, we'll start off by taking apart this Satagi one, and you can see how it works on the inside. And uh, well, there's I guess there's pros to it, um, but in my opinion, well, they work. Uh, they definitely work. And like I said, I'm not going to get into the um, you know the amount of loss that you incur from using one switch to the other. I may do a video in the future where we test them out. We'll um, we'll we'll rig up two switches and we'll measure how much power we lose. Um, from each switch, I don't think there'll be a lot of power lost, but it's still going to be uh, 
a bit. I would have, I would have thought probably more on this one, but you never know. You don't know, do you? I mean, I don't know. I can't say there is or can't say there isn't. But this is how they work. Very simple on the inside. You got your two SO239s there, and that one there, and the wires come down it there, and uh, as you can see, that's your switch. So that just switches on the in inside of there, and uh, comes down and goes out your aerial, or that might be your radio, depending on what, you, what way you got it plugged in. So it's very simple, um, and you've got two little holes, well, wrong side, sorry. You've got two little holes on the back there, um, so you can secure it to the wall. This one's been secured to the wall in the past, that's why it's all banged up. Don't know how old this is, by the way. They still make these, they obviously still make these, um, but how old this particular one is, I wouldn't like to say, I'd say it's quite old. Um, it's probably 10 or so years old, this particular one. So, let's put these screws back in here. Now you know how that one works, um, and when, when you see the other one, you may understand why, in my opinion, and you've got to remember, because there is quite a lot of arguments, you know, people say, no, nah, this is the best, that's the best, you know. Um, it's just the way that radio works. I won't put them screws back in there because they're a pain in the bum. Pain in the ass. Anyway, it's just the way that, you know, the um, general sort of environment around radio is, you know, some people prefer doing one thing. Some, there's, there's, there's probably ham people out there that would say, don't have any switches, just plug your coax in and forget about it. Um, but if you're going to have a switch, have one of these, I would say. Now, let me take this apart. I mean, I wish there was some way I could actually. I could get go and get a set of scales, and I could show you the difference in weight. Obviously, weight isn't uh, you know detrimental for quality in all aspects. I mean, you could have something that weighs a ton, but if it's built no good or the design's no good, it ain't going to help you out, is it? Um, but uh, yeah, it's just definitely better quality amongst these ones. I don't know who actually makes this particular switch I've got in my hand. Um, now, there we go. As you can see, this is the inside of this switch. And this is a lot more physical. There's a physical change happening there. That's a physical change. When you turn the bottom of the switch, it moves that little piece of, we'll just call it a piece of metal. I think it's copper. It might be brass. I don't know what it is brass or copper, I can't see. Anyway, it moves it and it doesn't touch the end. Yeah, so that one is now open and we're currently on what we're going to call antenna A. And if we do it that way, antenna A is no more and antenna B is now touching. So that one will be making a connection, that one will be receiving. Or if you've got radios plugged in here, radio A, radio B. And that's just the antenna. So it's a much more physical transaction between them both. You're not just flicking a switch and hoping it works inside now. Um, these are much more physical transaction and, and this is the way that I that I prefer. You can see in there everything's soldered together. It's just a much more sort of physical way of doing things and uh, you know if you're gonna have a switch in line this is the way that it should be I think rather than just flicking a switch um, <clears throat> And I think, I may be wrong, I don't know what sort of power these little Zatagi ones here can take. I mean, I didn't look it up, probably should have done. But these can take a lot more power. If you was in the station that runs a lot of power, this can take a lot more. I um, wouldn't recommend switching it while you're transmitting, mind you. It'd probably arc out, but uh, these can take more power due to the way they work. Those little switches inside those little Zatagi ones, they can't take too much power and they just melt. Um, obviously there will be a power rating on them when you buy them I don't know what they are but uh, they will be so there we go we've had a look inside some switches um, now I'm probably going to do a video later on in, later, uh, a later date and what we'll do is we'll plug this one in um, to a, a dummy load we'll have a dummy load and we'll have a radio um, won't be a powerful radio it'll just be radio maybe 100 watts We'll have a dummy load, and we'll have a, um, a reliable watt meter in line, 
and we'll see how much power we actually lose from using this one as a switch and from using this one um, and I'm going to put my bets on this one will lose the most compared to this one but I don't think it'll be a lot it may only be a watt it may only be loss of a watt um, I may need to get a, a bit of a more accurate watt meter in order to read it um, currently looking for a bird anyway so hopefully if I can get a nice a nice bird with a few slugs by the time I do that video we'll have a bit more of an accuracy one but uh, anyway so if you want to see that test just stay tuned for it but now you know how these switches work and uh, if you are going to go for a switch whether it be ham or CB I don't care which go for one of these you know buy one of these they're a bit more expensive um, but it'd be better in the long run for you um, obviously the best is not to have a switch at all but you know if you're going to just uh, get one of these ones I would recommend anyway rather than these little switching ones all right Lovely job. If you're liking the uh, ham, if you're liking the radio videos, and you know, subscribe because there's more coming. They will come up in the winter. So, thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, I hope it was helpful. If if you've got any corrections, by the way, if I've said something wrong or done something wrong, or you've got a disagreement, just put it in the comments. Yeah, I'm not all about arguing and you know saying uh, whatever arguments you may have, but just uh, a nice calm comment. Um, if you put in your correction or question in the comments and other people can get back to you and we can start a discussion in the comments uh, that's always nice to read comments like that when you have a little bit of a discussion it's very nice anyway take care everyone and uh, maybe see you on Sunday because on Sunday there's a radio video looking at vintage radios CB and ham radios every Sunday at 3am um, at um, BST or GMT depending on what time of the year you're watching this so take care thanks for watching everyone